Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as that great, great Iberian Union. So, we get an event to read and a couple comments to go over. Let's go over the comments first, because before I forget them. Uh, someone recommends I play as Burgundy. I know. I really want to, but I want to save Burgundy for kind of last-ish. I, I know I want to play as them. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll see what happens. Uh, Germany still in the Civil War. So, another comment was, why didn't I not choose the other focus? The general plan, so we can go to war... And make reformism weaker in the council. Well, as much as I really, really, really want to go to war, we need more reform. We to re really make sure that the union stays strong, we have to reform. At least that's what I've been told, and I think it actually makes a lot of sense because eventually the leaders probably will eventually perish. But we need to reform to make sure that the system stays stable. So uh, we could do that, but we'll see what happens. But let's read about <clears throat> the Ministry of National Education. In a drive to stabilize the Iberian inter t internal divisions, and so that the current administration is not politically inert, it has been announced that Cadillo Franco will throw our various government ministries in order to gain insight into the workings and current conditions. Some have already labeled this as a pointless and insulting PR move, something to be put in the daily tabloids to distract from other more pressing news. Official statements, however, hail the proposed events as a turning point in Iberia's current political and economic fortunes, dismissing the criticism as pointless fear-mongering. The elderly dictator his first visit would be able would be to the education ministry in the run up to the day lobbyists have been arguing for more funding to increase iberian standards of education both in order to help the national economy while providing better employment opportunities and help the union better compete on the global stage whether franco will heed their advice and only make slight reforms in order to balance the national budget or just ignore them entirely will be seen on the day and i do have a cup of coffee here half drunk kind of warm but let's keep keep on drinking now we can say education will pr be prioritized. Improve, promise to improve the situation somewhat, or make no promises. We don't want to do that, obviously. So here's a trick with this specific uh, event. What you want to do is you can choose one prioritization because there's going to be other events like this very like within the next few days. You can only choose one that will be prioritized, and the others you can just promise to improve the situation somewhat. So for education, let's come down here. Education-wise, let's see. Yeah, academic base, right? That's academic base. It's academic base. It's slowly decreasing. So we want to make sure it stops decreasing because that wouldn't be very good. However, that being said, even if we get more bonuses, we get more research speed, which is okay. Let's just promise to improve the situation somewhat because there are other bonuses here. I think we get a total of like three events talking about the ministries. So let's keep that in mind. And see, ag agriculture. And if we wanted to improve agriculture, uh, we are currently on mass mechanization, which is not bad. Actually, that's not bad at all. Modern agriculture would be very nice, but that's not ne super necessary. But Franco's grandly advertised tour of the nation's various government continues as he was preparing to meet the Minister of Agriculture and other top civil servants. Land reform and the future of farming are always hot topics during the election cycles, especially in more rural Iberian settings, which resulted in the upcoming meeting tripled, tripling newspaper and analysis sales. Among the concerns that the Spanish Caudillo may not be entirely suited to discussing such matters of state, some are more particularly scathing attacks published by left-wing organizations who see the strong man as a growing tumor wasting away Iberian societal and economic wealth. The decisions made at the meeting, however, could signal a new direction for rural prosperity, which had long been lagging behind urban development. It's not yet clear what will be decided. We could prioritize it. Uh, improve the situation, the situation somewhat, or worsen the bureaucrat's opinion. The bureaucrat's opinion right now is mostly Salazar's but let's go with just improve the situation somewhat. And now that he leaned towards Salazar, which is not a bad thing, we should have one more event here. Should have one more. There we go. The Ministry of Development. Franco's grandly adv advertised tour on the nation's various ministries continues as he was preparing to meet the Minister of Development and other relevant state, state secretaries attached to this department. Road expansion and public works in general are a way of good improving the national economy and provide jobs for the people, but they can sometimes create bad conditions for the workers, which are leftist underground organizations used to attract people to their cause. As industrial expertise, let's come down here. Even after the promises made to the other ministries, Franco is sure that he can grant the Ministry of Development some of its demands, such as more money for or an improvement of workers' conditions. Just before entering the meeting, advisors have warned the, the Cadillo that not all the things the ministry needs can be promised, so it's up to Franco to decide what he'll say on the matter. So right now we have uh, let's see, experience, industrial base, which is not bad. If we come over here, get more cap, retention, and gain. We need to choose at least one of these, so let's go ahead and choose this one. If, if the expenses rise, so be it. You know, 900, that's a hundred million more dollars. So it'll be it, whatever. And let's continue down with Matai's oil after I take another sip of coffee. Ah, tasty. There's another matter that needs to be fleshed out between ourselves and the Italians. It concerns the matter of oil, more specifically the oil wealth of Matai's ENI. 
We're all too aware of the man's intentions to ravage the region in the search for more oil. We need to hash out some kind of terms before the ENI decides upon something without our consent. Matai. What would be a fool not to strike some sort, some sort of deal with ourselves. We all know that it is in our best interest to share the oil wealth of this very prosperous land. And the natives certainly wouldn't know what to do with it. So, it is once more up to the Europeans to sort this out in a civilized way, which results in everyone being the winner. There's more than enough oil here for everyone, so hopefully this shouldn't be too much hassle. And we'll do some secret meetings. That's okay, what are we currently building right now? Uh, our GDP is almost 26 billion, while our debt is almost 8 billion, which is not great. We've got some refineries going. We've got some civilian factors going as we're building up more infrastructure. And Santa Maria hijacked by pro-democracy activists Salazar and Franco sit in a secluded briefing room, accompanied by the admirals and colonels of the Iberian Navy. They, the mood within is grim as an admiral begins the briefing. Cadillos, three days ago, at 1100 hours, an Iberian passenger ship known as the Santa Maria departed from Port in Caracas. Within two hours of her departure, contact was temporarily lost. Today, at 1400 hours, we received a communique, communique from the West Indies Federation detailing their discoveries surrounding the vessel. This morning, the Santa Maria temporarily docked in St. Saint Lucia, offloading four injured crewmen for medical attention before quickly departing once again. As the crewmen spoke only Portuguese, it was not until after the departure of the Santa Maria that local authorities could appropriately discern the situation aboard. Caldillos, the Santa Maria and her 900 occupants, including American and other foreign nationals, are currently held hostage by approximately two dozen pro-democracy terrorists. The leader of the terrorists is said to be Henrique Galvao. Oh. However, we are currently attempting to confirm these claims. A civilian maritime advisory has already been issued, however. Our naval forces are not ready to conduct a Caribbean search. The room descends into an eerie silence as the Cadillos absorb the gravity of the situation. Quickly, Franco chimes in. If there are Americans being held hostage by these terrorists, we must contact the American government immediately. They will not stand for this, exclaims Franco. No, we should not draw attention to these terrorists. Galvao has received enough attention for his treasonous actions. He should not receive any further recognition. Salazar retorts. The two descend into a fiery argument as the rest of the room uh, awkwardly looks on. We can do nothing. Uh, help expand reformism in the council. There are Americans aboard. We ask you for help. This would be good because we... M I don't know if we can, but it would be nice if we, if we could actually join the OFN. Uh, I think that would be really good just because we don't like Germany. So We shall contact them. The Americans. Oh, speak at the business summit. Oh, conservative, huh? Cool. Uh, anything else down here? Uh, we could raise salaries. They are still content, so I'm not too worried about that. You know what? How about we speak at the business summit? Oh, see, so Franco's military is fully aligned. The bureaucrats don't have a preference now. And then the colonial settlers are fully Salazar. Colonial native lead toward Franco. Uh, this could be really bad. Let's try this one. Because we, we, well, we have the political power. We might as well try it, right? Matai's oil. Great. Secret meetings. In order to hash out the most intrinsic, important, and excruciating details of the plan for the new Algeria, a number of secret meetings are occurring between the, dip the diplomatic delegations of Iberia and Italy. The very best and most important figures from both sides are set to meet in some extremely tight-knit hush-hush talks. These meetings will likely be the defining point of the negotiation period. It will likely be where it is decided that this plan can go ahead or be dead in the water. The distrust in the air between the diplomats is palpable. Even after all this time, it is clear that the two nations do not trust each other. So much has happened in, over a short period of time recently in times as war-heavy and as chaotic as this. Or Z's. Opportunists arise in the case is no different. Each side may have its deliberate saboteurs who do not wish for the outcome of these meetings to be a pleasant one. God knows what is truly occurring in these meetings, but God help the region if it all turns out for the worst. We'll see what happens as... Oh. Meetings with the ENI officials. The best part of guarding any kind of afflu affluent figure. The bodyguard reflected was a secret. He would never tell anyone a word of what he heard during the during the meetings. That even to his death, but it had become a peculiar hobby of his to collect the secrets mentioned over the conference table. As far as anyone knew, he was maintaining professional posture. What the bodyguard knew was a little ashamed of was that he abided his time by listening. For the most sensitive matters, he couldn't do such a thing. He was never where he could hear anything. Today, the man was nearly sure that this meeting would be one of those affairs. With another guard, he was to watch the door and make sure no one else entered. If there was a scuffle, he would stop it. None of the sort happened. Eventually, the door opened with businessmen and diplomats filling out or filing out. The guard watched him silently before he was given his next orders. Come on, we're going to lunch. I like those orders. Those orders seem really nice. So over here, this is still Franco stuff. So popularity. We should have an event here pretty soon, but okay. Oh, choosing a stage. In order to best address the economic situation in Iberia, the Cadillos have opted to host a discussion for business leaders in order to encourage cooperation with the government because of his talent for speech and the predominantly Spanish makeup of the business leaders. Franco's obvious choice for the job, hosted at the Western Palace at Madrid, uh, the function was primarily for business leaders and brought to their attention specifically. Even though they are the main target, it is not yet too late to hold the speech in a public arena. 
There are two locations that are most easily secured for summit, the main stage of the Western Palace, or in a private, undisclosed location. Hosting the speech somewhat more, more private will be an easier job to secure, as well as allowing for only the businessmen to be present. That way they can be get better catered to. Along with it, there is of leaks. Alternatively, the speech can be made public for a larger crowd. This will eliminate any risk of someone compromising secure conversations and will prevent any unpleasant accusations of the loyalty of the Cabello. It will cost more to secure the public location, and the speech will have to be broad in tone. Otherwise, some groups could be lost by catering to others. The obvious choice is two. Oh, this is going to be a bad choice, no matter what I choose, right? Alright, so we could probably hold this speech. Uh, hmm. I kind of want to do it behind closed doors, just because we can actually talk to the bureaucrats uh, more personally. We can see what happens with that, maybe? Maybe? Making promises? More easily guarded, a private sitting was the obvious choice to hold a speech at. Only the higher echelons of businessmen will actively be attending, amounting to a small group. This will make the situation much less formal, allowing for a few targeted uh, incentives to be made, with the public not watching and making assurances become far, far easier and much less risky. Only it is a conscious choice to make these assurances. If one were to promise to the business leaders that the Iberian economy would just get a touch more free, it could go a long way towards getting their attention. These reforms will nearly ensure their support if the troubles taken to address them. However, making what is essentially a bribe for political capital is frowned upon. If it were to be found publicly, then it would be create new issues. Therefore, the speech could be made vague and simply assuring the target's prosperity and growth. This will not make the, any particular friends, but on the other hand, it would mean that the speech would be mostly bulletproof politically. Is it worth... Is it... Is risk worth the potential game? This seems like this could go south very, very quickly, but we're going to try it anyways. So they lean toward us now. Please don't have any issues. Please don't have any issues. By the love of God, don't have any issues. I'm trying my best here, because this is my first attempt with all this stuff. Uh, it looks like the Kingdom of England is still winning. Serbia's won. And so far, I don't want to say we're too successful, but it looks like there's no issues, which is a good thing. Talk about the talks. As the talks have finally died down, the discussion now turns to their possible outcome could be. The Iberian political elite back home wait with bated breath for the Italians' response to the plan we have worked so hard to secure. Thus far, it appears like things are going somewhere and a deal look, just looks to be in sight. We have had no definite response, though, and this is making some more worrisome members of the Iberian political society tear their hair out. In the end, it is down to the Italians, and all we can do is wait for the response. We don't have to wait long, though, for a decision is sure to come reasonably sharpish. Let us all hope that these talks are not all for naught, and that something good can come out of this whole endeavor. If not, this has been a spectacular waste of time and quite the missed opportunity. Ian I offers a limited context. Yardim stirred his coffee idly, spinning a stir around in circles. He had everything he wanted in it. He could splurge like that now, and he was merely waiting for a map to show up. Every now and then, he took a few steps of coffee, speeding up as time wore on to beat his cooling drink. His cup was already empty when he heard the door click open, and he had just enough time to set it down before beholding the face of an advisor in that advisor hands a map. The map, when enrolled, revealed itself to be a map of Oran, just as Yadim had requested. Not any map, however, this was a survey map of the oil deposits around the city of Oran. There were a few red marks over the paper, where some of the oil areas had been scribbled over with a red pencil. So many had been marked over, in fact, that Yadim could count them on one hand, plus one was that oh no, it's half co colored. I suspect you're aware of what kind of map this is. A red colored deposit means the it uh, Italians signed a contract with us for it. He places his finger on the half colored deposit on the map. Here, we're still working out the details. Looks like it'll happen though, so what are they planning? Uh, why are they so nervous? Think about it. If they didn't have something to hide, they'd sign more deals, right? Yardim slaps a hand on the map, looking up at the man who brought it in. I think our olive branch is withering. Hey, we get more fuel. That's actually really nice. Preliminary meetings. With the context in Ian I sorted, it would be much easier to come to an equitable settlement with Italy. It is a natural natural impulse of man to preserve his gains, and so he will be less inclined to enter a scenario where they are at risk. The recent deals with the Italian-owned oil company has created those potential gains. If we were to come into conflict, then the lucrative deals for the black gold would be gone. By playing the seed of profit, we, can show, we have shown the Italians that our objectives are friendship and cooperation. To cement this, diplomats have been sent into meetings with Italian officials with the influence of a company who wants to preserve profits, and a show of willingness a peaceful solution is in sight. This, of course, will not be an immediate affair, and the objective of our diplomats for the first few meetings will be to build trust. Business always finds a way. Ah, oh, crap, bureaucrats now don't like me. 63%, though, that's nice. Ah, uh, now they don't have a preference. But the bis actually, no, the businessmen... So the bureaucrats don't have a preference. The military likes us. The businessmen like us, kind of. The colonial natives like us, and the settlers don't like us. The Americans captured Gabal. Galvao. Reports have arrived today from the U.S. Navy that the Santa Maria has been secured. A contingent of U.S. Marines aboard the USS Hermitage were able to successfully board the Santa Maria in the dark early hours of the morning. Seven hijackers were killed and no civilians or crew members were hostages upon the ship were harmed. The other 17 hijackers were captured by the U.S. Navy and placed under custody. Among those captured is Enrique Galveo, who asserted himself to the Marine forces once they swiftly stormed the bridge of the ship. The U.S. has already agreed to extradite the Iberian hijackers to us to meet up with, with our legal system. The Americans, after questioning Galveo, have alerted us to its intentions. The intent of the hijacking was to sail to the ship to Portugal. 
were intended to incite rebellion within Iberia. Should he have succeeded, he could have provoked a, or proven a truth or an inner side. Our concerns are not dispelled, however. While this is one pro-democracy rebel is now in our custody, he did not act alone. There are others within Iberia who would risk their lives to fight for a democratic cause. We must root them out before they can take hold. Good. Which means I think we're going to need a lot of guns for what we're about to do. We're going to need a lot of guns. We gotta get rid of these god dang terrorist scum. God dang, this takes forever to build. Then again, uh, we have not gone that far in time because of all these things that are happening. So, it looks like this part of the tree is done. We can't do that yet. Algeria is still in crisis, so we can't really do a focus. Let's see, is that... I think that's it for the focus tree for now. If that's the case, you know what? We can spend some time getting more political power. And happy 1964, my friends. Happy New Year. Hey, come on. It's New Year. It's New Year time. Yay! Little bit of lag. Oh, the government prevails in the English Civil War. Cool. And eh, we're not gonna do that stuff. We're still conservative. Yeah, so be it. So be it. Anything else I can do down here? Can I? Oh, start the East Lock, East Side Lock system. And here we go. The Algerian War. War it is. This will worsen Iberia's stability. God dang it! Come on. This will unlock decisions in which Salazar will attempt to deal with Iberia's foreign policy. So be it. Twenty-six billion. Not bad. Oh, we can actually do this stuff now? Nice. This one lock. Um, well, we were trying to do this one earlier. But uh, let's do interesting times because we won't always have the, the Civil War in Germany. So the German Reich has been torn asunder. Various powers within it are battling out for dominance in a brutal civil war, the result of which may very well change the fate of the entire world. Now we can sit back and watch everyone beat the crap out of each other, but it seems far more lucrative to send or find ways to take advantage of the situation. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh, we got more money here. Five million? Oh, seven million. Jesus. I might want to wait till we get seven million. That's that's not bad. So what else we... Oh, oh here we go. With well, the Algerian situation behind her, Iberia is ready to step onto the world stage. With Caudillo Salazar leading initiatives overseas, his greatest focus lies in reaching out to the former colonies in attempts to reach mutually beneficial partnerships. But Iberia's current colonies also require additional att attention. Despite the fact that Iberia's standing in the world could be greatly strengthened, making these decisions will doubtlessly make Salazar new enemies across Iberia, her colonies, and around the world. Were Salazar's popularity to fall behind significantly during this trying time, the stu stability of the nation could be in jeopardy when he's needed the most. And there's nothing else. So let's go ahead and do... Let's see. Who is he popular with? He is popular with colonial settlers. Standby claims. This will worsen the foreign relations of everyone else. Um, yeah, let's start standby claims on Angola and Mozambique. Because we want to make sure Salazar is not that well liked. And since these guys are at war, I can send volunteers. So we can finally do a little bit more of a warfare focus. Now, you guys are probably what I'm going to send down to there. You guys, I have these. I just, mm, These guys can be pretty darn fast. If we look at our infantry, their piercing is not great. Mm, let's see, we got some of this. I don't, oh, IFVs were out of IFV, so it just would not be smart to send IFV. So I'm going to send you guys down here. We're going to send some volunteers. We're getting involved. This is what I was waiting for the entire time. Revisions? Good. Yes. Do we have any planes? Oh, uh, we can send the 94. That's actually makes sense. Good. 550. There you go. Nice. So just in case, come over here. Northern... Africa, that'd be kind of good. Interesting times, it is. So, a matter of national security, supporting Shpia and therefore his ideas will expand reformism in the council, making money, decrease reforms. Oh, I want to make money, man. I want to make money. Our pipeline, the leak, mark up goods, open the armories, send over guns, ooh, get rid of hardline phalangus will increase reformism in the council, but not too many. That's a matter, matter of national security. Much as we hate the Germans, many in our government recognize that Albert Speer, should he take power, is at least likely to be aggressive with us. It may put us, put a bitter taste in our mouth to do so, but it might be worth it in the long run to aid Speer's faction. Plus, sending over volunteers is an easy way to rid ourselves of some diehard fascists in our own country. Which is a good thing. Oh, volunteer forces and transfer. Place. Yeah, I, I want to spend more money, but we got just... Oh, the Germans have a war. The German Reich wants thought to be to last a thousand years. Well, we'll see about that. It's in peril. Hitler's death has led to various pretenders to the throne, quickly turning Germany into a battleground. Many of our citizens, and indeed most of our government, believe that the best course of action would not to be get, to get involved. After all, Germany eating itself alive gives us the valuable opportunity to focus on our own affairs without worrying about imminent invasion. This team, Caduio, however, has other plans. Franco believes that we could potentially come out much stronger by involving ourselves in the affairs of the Civil War, at least to a certain extent. They propose two ways we can do this. The first being sending some aid to Spiao's faction in hopes that we may gain a powerful ally when this is all over. The second option, which Franco seems to be personally prefer, is simply to sell guns and supplies to each side, making enough of a profit to fix our economic woes. 
It seems that to maximize efficiency, it would be in our best interest to put our effort into only one option, as we don't have the resources to stretch ourselves in between the two. But surely, with the guidance of the Caudillos, our intervention in the Germans of War can only turn out well. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, I don't want to ask that too much because, well, things could go very poorly. Uh, actually, are we still... Do we really need... Eh, we need it to a degree, yeah. Cool. Keep it up there for now. Because we'll help out. We're definitely, we'll definitely make sure that our side that we like will win. Million dollars. I need... Ten million dollars. Yeah, we got enough political power to do it anyway, so we'll do that. Franco, Franco, Salazar, Franco. It's fine. Stand by claims on Angola. Matter of national security. Uh, light in the black. I want to save guns for now because we need them. So light in the black. Spiel's faction needs soldiers. We have lots of dissidents in our own army who have co who have co covert or open fascist sympathies, making something a bit too extreme for our government's liking. Perhaps we can kill two birds with one stone by sending over these radicals as cannon fodder. We mean up uh, volunteers for Spiel. They'll be out of our hair, and Spiel will be grateful for the support. It's a win-win situation. 28 out of 100, not bad. Cool, and join anti-separatist efforts across the world. Worsen regional... Yes, yes, that'd be great. Yes. We have 6 million. I want to get that 7 million done now. Come on, guys. Oh, you got... Oh, that's not good. You got sort of in circle, but once our tanks show up, we're going to go for this division and get, get rid of them. Okay, when are you going to show up? Come on. Come on now. There they are. So yeah, at least we can do a little bit of warfare in 64. At least a little bit. How much political power are we getting? We have 86 factories. Nice. 0.87, that's not bad. Anything here? Uh, 100 million. That's not bad in terms of debt. Or deficit, I mean. That's really not bad. Do another field marshal, maybe? Uh, planning. Uh, oh, I don't like that. I can promote someone else, actually. He's an old guard. He's politically connected. Uh, I'll promote you. You're not really good in an attack, but whatever. I don't really care. I'll get more attack. There you go. Uh, we can do that stuff, but I'm gonna get, focus over here first. There you go. Shouldn't be too bad. I mean, the tanks should go zoom, 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 zoom. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Let's see. For now, we're doing okay. We're hopefully getting a little bit more air XP. Yeah, we are. That's nice. Oh, you found some tanks, huh? Military austerity. You know what? We're not gonna cut. Oh, look at that. 900 million. Even if we don't cut spending. Okay, not bad, not bad. Get over here. Go do that. And we'll just kill off that enemy division. I love tanks. Go ahead and uh, start beating them up if you like. There you go. Boom. Ah, Salazar pushes involvement in the South African War. Within the high government official offices in Madrid, yet another disagreement erupts between the Caudillos. Following the outbreak of the South African War, the German and American spheres have thrown their weight behind the factions of the Boer Republic and the Dominion of South Africa, respectively. As the conflict drags on, concerns within Iberia grow that the German-backed African powers may soon overrun the Dominion of South Africa, creating a dominance of the German sphere within a central to South Africa. The U.S. has grown increasingly involved in the conflict, with the growing American force being committed to the South African War to prop up the Dominion government. Salazar argues to an unconvinced Franco that the Iberian nation will greet benefit greatly through intervention in South Africa. While the front lines of this conflict are far from home, assistance to the dominion of South Africa against the Germans and the Boers could provide a barrier to further expansion of German influence within the African continent. Furthermore, Salazar argues that within a continent rife with the rise of a new nation, or a few new nations, as uh, uh, nations sig sign significant favor and influence over a well-established state such as South Africa could prove an essential strategic stepping stone in the expansion and maintenance of the Iberian influence globally. The Cadillos have yet to come to the formal agreement required for any official action to take place. Salazar is unrelenting in his proposals, believing firmly in the necessity of Iberian intervention in South Africa. If either of the Cadillos are is to be moved in his opinion, it was likely not to be Salazar. We must act, and we will eventually. Uh, you know, you can help out for now. Does that unlock things for this? Uh, oh yeah, scale back military. Ooh, intervent military in Equatorial Guinea. Huh. Okay, sure. Why not? 20 out of 100. Anything else down here? Money yet? Nope. Do we unlock anything part of our new of our tree? Nothing about South Africa. Can we actually send volunteers? Let's see. I don't know. Let's see. Union of South Africa. We cannot send volunteers. So that sucks. The hidden war. We'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. Come on, come on. Good job, guys. Get bona. And you're going to just take all these divisions. I'm sending the tanks in because they just move so fast. What you could do is come down there, maybe. Do that, do that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You guys come down there. See what happens. 
Ah, Franco strongly agrees with Salazar's South Africa proposal. Wow, that's weird. Following the steadfast assailants of proposals and arguments from Salazar, Franco has finally come to an agreement with his counterpart. Following the American intervention in the Santa Maria affair, where the U.S. Marines secured the terrorist leader Galveo, as well as ensuring the safety of 900 hostages, Franco feels indebted to the Americans. He agrees with Salazar that the Americans deserve steadfast support in their South African interventionism, and that Iberia should do all in its capacity to ensure that they do not stand alone combating German influence in Africa. The Cadillos immediately prepare the necessary measures to commence the planning of the operations. Franco, swiftly arranged. Ranges for eminent meetings with the military high command as Salazar calls for arrangements to be made with the foreign ministry to begin diplomatic engagements with the Americans and South Africans concerning the war. The cogs of the Iberian diplomatic machine begin turning. Well, look at that. We will repay the Americans for their favors tenfold. That sounds awesome. Uh, but does that anything in our focus tree? Like, I I'd like it to be, but you know what? You never know. You never know with uh, TNO. You never to flip a no. Tarat. Tariat. Cool. Come on, guys. Keep moving. Keep going. Good. Don't defeat him. Oh, actually, you're attacking. You're defending, it looks like. That's fine with me. Alright, 26.09. Alright, let's see. Well, we don't have any more decisions for this group here, which sucks, but whatever. Um, oh. Would you like to keep him in place for now? Uh, if they cut him off there, that'd be great. Go, go. Oh, what do we have here? Ah, reach out to non-Catholic nations? Worsens the church opinion of Salazar. Sure, why not? Colonial settlers are fully aligned towards them. It's, which is kind of wasting a little bit of time here. If we get the... Was it 3 million one? That'd be 9 million, 7 million. We can worry salaries. 65% uh, towards completion. That's nice. Hey, look. Encirclement. Beautiful. But... Uh, we're just, we can we can do this one. Buy more electrical equipment. That'd be fine. Maintenance cost goes down. So that'd be good. 78 million is quite a bit right now. Beautiful. Uh, since we were here, you might as well come down here. And you might as well kill off that division if you can. That'd be kind of good. Alright, so light in the black. Cool. Get rid of the radicals. Why not? Word is being run through the corridors and back channels that the government is forming a secret group of military advisors to aid Albert Schiavo's attempts to restore the Reich. Only the most capable and competent military officers, who coincidentally have happened to be all hardline phalangists, are recruited through private meetings in order to bring five of the most trusted aides. Famous old uh, general Os um Augustin Munoz Grandes was honored to have been trusted with his special task and is leaving Madrid on a plane heading for Germany. Sadly, Goring's Lufafa is world famous for its capable interceptors, so we pray for their safety. Oh, uh, well, I don't know about praying, but yeah, we, we'll pray for the safety. Yeah, put it like that, yeah. U.S. welcomes their help in Africa. Great! Following a meeting with American President Richard Nixon. Ah, tricky deck. Our ambassador to the U.S. has been reported back to the foreign ministry in Madrid with American response. The Americans have, quite jubilantly, accepted our offer of support of South Africa and will welcome our forces in addition to theirs in the conflict. In further support of their efforts, the Americans have pledged extensive logistical assistance to commerce, or to commence, our operations in the region to ensure a smooth operational launch. Salazar has proven to be quite elated following this news. Already, thousands of Portuguese soldiers are poised for de deployment to South Africa, as thousands more conduct additional training to prepare for the future new deployments. Many in the public remain skeptical, however, of the significance of such a conflict. People question why Iberian men must be sent to perish in a conflict thousands of miles away over a country with no true ties to Iberia. Regardless of skepticism, Salazar has a, por has a Portuguese war machine mobilizing as much as feasible. As the countdown to Iberian operations, South Africa begins. Changes of focus due to intervention in South Africa. A show of mutual benefit. Uh, how close are we to finishing? Oh, we're not close at all. So excellent. Ah, I see. I knew that something was going to come out down here. Music concerts? They get more war support? Green Berets in Bissau? Ooh. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Naval exercises. L Lease? Zautom? We'll pay handsomely for this. Airborne nurses? Counterinsurgency units. I kind of like that. Provide the maps? Uh, send over guns. Wait. We... Hmm... We try to get, we try to read that music concerts. The National Women's Movement has never ceased to be a great boon for Iberia. They are of upsetting moral character, making very good care workers, and frequent volunteers. All we need to do is help as much as ask, and they will be willing to help. And more often than not, have someone able to do what is needed. That is said. It is said that a good song can lend even the darkest heart, and there are many dark hearts in wartime. The American soldiers stationed in South Africa would most likely appreciate someone to sing for them, for a sweet, sweet melody to raise their spirits. The women's movement has many talented singers in it, and they can be sent to Africa to play for the American troops. The concerts will be funded by us fully, and they are sure to appreciate what we can do for them. Yes, absolutely. I'm still waiting up there. That's fine. Good, 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 good. Go and take all the territory if you can. Just go towards the capital. Come on. Hey, good. Keep them there for now. Oh, we got cut off. Or, we got struggled bust here. Uh, if that's a... Ooh, I don't want them to move. I really don't want them to move. Let's see what happens. Uh, you guys get down here. You might just be able to cut these guys off completely. Let's we'll see what happens. Come on. Music concert's great. 
and now we should do naval exercises. The American Navy is very adept at what they do. It is only logical for a world power to have such a great sailing force able to dominate the waters. Since American relations seem to be improving, it may be possible that they would be willing to participate in a few mutually beneficial programs. All it will take to bring them around to it will be a small amount of persuasion and then some competent scheduling. It is no secret that the Iberian and American naval fleets have a world of difference between them, with different doctrines, tactics, and officers all creating a vast gap between the two. Opposites attract, and a contrast on naval styles could prove to be very helpful. To this end, arrangements have, will be made for a joint naval exercise, which will prove invaluable for in providing intelligence to better improve our strategies. We get a bonus to ships, which, at least to me, doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, ships? Yeah, okay. Uh, it might make more sense if we did, uh... If we got a bonus to naval exercises, or naval doctrine, but, eh, that's just me. Uh, what can we do here? De-emphasize our colonialism in the world? I don't know, man. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I don't necessarily like that one, but looks like we have to take that. Keep an eye down there. That'd be fine. And then go that way. Destroy the enemy divisions. That would be great. Just smash them to bits. And go to Urgane. Italian Empire to go war in Greece. Okay, wow. Uh, Lise Saltaoma. Ah, one of the only Portuguese colonies to resist German incursion, and a stable and pleasant island. And the island is a darling of Portugal, not for its beauty, but for its importance. It was the first colonized area to serve as a waypoint in the long and treacherous journey to India. Even though it has been centuries since then, and decades since the last time the island was necessary, it is not without use. The island is in a location of immense tactical value. It will serve as a dock for ships and a point through which to filter supplies. It is for these reasons that the Americans want us to, want to use it. As a gesture of goodwill, we can effectively rent out the island to them and allow them to use it as they please, so long as they give it back to us in fair shape. It so happens, conveniently, that a fair sum of money can be made off the deal. Ah, yes. I love making money. 100 million, not bad. Are we done building? Ah, we are done building that. Civilian factory it is. Sure, why not? Uh, and then, refineries? Yes. Being... Ooh, that's, that's really nice. Being uh, oil independent would be an amazing thing. And we get more rubber, so... That's awesome, awesome, awesome. Just beat up the horses. Good. Hope you're learning. He did get maybe more attack, maybe? Maybe not? I don't know. Let's see what happens. What are the remaining, div remaining divisions? I want you guys... You just go down here as well. See what you can do. Speed, 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 speed. Oh, the cavalry division went down here. That's fine. Let's come over here. Air base. Get down here. There you go. We could definitely make more tactical bombers, but then again, we can make a lot more things in general. Rush is at war with itself. Add two million to the budget. Great. Let's go ahead and do install the hydroelectric turbines. They're still content, which is great. 65% done. Imposing tariffs on foreign goods. Ooh, ah, oh, I don't know if I want to do that growth will decrease. Let's do the Organized Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Let's do that one. Franco, don't have a preference. Salazar, that's okay. Hey, there we go. Lee Saltoma. And now we shall do, provide the maps. The Germans took the Portuguese colonies from their original workers, ripping out the pride and soul half of the Union. It was nothing short of an act of cruelty. Worst of all were the retornados, who were forced to flee their homelands to escape the tyranny that would affect them. The heart-wrenching stories of those who have truly lost everything have made it a very strong case to the government. Therefore, it is about time that they got their revenge. If the Portuguese shall not have it, then the Germans surely won't either. Even though they seemingly took everything, there is something very important they failed to take. And we still have the map of assets around Angola, and it is unlikely that Germany has modified anything. It would be a shame if the map were be given to the Americans so that they could disable the infrastructure when they find necessary. Or they find it necessary to disable it. That's fine with me. I don't really care. And you know what? We did a great job, guys. We did a fantastic job of helping out in that war effort. It only cost us a lot of a few planes and a few thousand lives. The gods of the north, nothing but nonsense. Oh boy. I got more planes actually all around here. Huh. Oh, Italy also finished the war too. So instead of focusing on Algeria, they focus on the Greeks. Which I'm not sure if I would recommend they do that, but okay, Iberia can control of Algeria. That's what we like to see. Our victory was inevitable. Now these are okay. I don't like using interceptors though. Uh, are these, oh, this is Cass. Oh, that's nice. I like Cass. Provide the maps. That'd be great. I'm going to send over, do this as fast as possible. Green Braves and Bissau. Africa is a vast place with many different environments. What no one will tell you is that these environments are less different than what we think. And there's a lot of crossover between them. For example, there are many skills you can learn in one place that you could use in another. It is only logical that the Americans would appreciate learning some skills for their time in South Africa. We will open up Guinea-Bissau to the U.S. military. And in particular, invite their special forces to come and train in the area. They could use a practice of fight, to fight better in the hostile environments of Africa, where Guinea, Guinea could, prove, oh, could prove a valuable introduction to it. That's really good. Really, wow, look at that political power. Add more money to the budget. I'd like to upgrade the cranes, but we shall see. Gibraltar Station. There we go. 65% done. Great. Uh, let's see. Increase extraction from Guinea? Yes. Yes. 
Absolutely, get more political power, worse, worsens the natives' opinions, and that's okay with us. So, how much are we making? Oh, 8.3 billion dollars in deficit? That is not ideal. Quite not ideal. Pujad elected as president of France. Hey, look at this. Slowly going up at one a month. Nice. Our soldiers have returned. Green Berets are back. Or well, we've done that one. Uh, the Cancionero do Nyasa. The mission of the Portuguese in Angola, their divinely ordained duty, was to civilize the people there. Since the Portuguese were chased away by the Nazis, the job was left only half finished. Yet, still, the history of the Portuguese colonialism in the region is something that can be used to our advantage. One of the first things the settlers did was teach the inhabitants Portuguese in order to better communicate with the natives. Portuguese language is no by, by no means universal, but a significant enough number of Africans in the former colony know that the language is to make alternative operations practical. We will deploy forces to use their power of song and voice to strike fear into the Africans fighting under German command, turning their traditions and customs against them. These operations will harm their morale, allowing the Americans a better chance. Oh, more political power, nice. Let's go ahead and cut the budget. We actually have liquid reserves? Ooh, we got paid, huh? Very nice. Uh, I want more growth. I'm cutting down to the deficit might be. Uh, it's only 200 million. We only if we invested in the G in the GDP, you only get 100 million, which is not very much. If you cut down the deficit, you might cut down 0.2, which is not great. It's really not great, but it is what it is. Add another million, sure. I don't want it until I don't want to like increase the workers' contentment. If they're currently content, that makes no sense to do that, but whatever. Uh, airborne nurses. Some of the Portuguese are without a brave, uh, without a doubt brave. That, or they're just being thrill seekers. Either way, their willingness can be put to good use in service of the Americans. Medics are not always on time, nor can they always get to places easily on land. What makes it worse is that they can't always get out to where they need to be by air, either. As they would rather have, as they would have nowhere to land. The Portuguese airborne nurses have been created to solve that problem. They will parachute out of helicopters and other aircraft at high altitudes and to hostile conditions in order to save lives. Through thick and thin, no matter the risk, it is here that the bravest will shine and those who are in it for a throw will get exactly what they want. They will be like angels from heaven. Come to bring salvation to those in need. That sounds awesome. That actually sounds really, really awesome. And under mean, under mean, under mine, uh, unhelpful foreign policy think tanks. Cool. We're making everyone pissed off at Salazar. I definitely don't want to hurt my GDP though. I definitely don't. U.S. Air Force hits Luanda Arms Factory. In exchange, following an exchange of information between the Iberian and mil American militaries, the USAF has been in possession of detailed information upon the logistical and industrial layout of the Africa shield control regions of Mozambique and Angola. The intelligence has not been left to waste. Yesterday afternoon, though, USAF bombers struck at an industrial centers within Luanda, where significant arms production has been undertaken for the duration of the conflict in South Africa. Due to information provided by Iberian intelligence, American bombers were able to fall with deadly uh, accuracy upon essential edifices within the local industry, causing irreparable damages and bringing a significant share of arm production in the region to a complete halt. Due to the quick and devastating nature of the new American bombing campaign, it is hoped by many that senior officials that the productive capabilities of the Reich's commissariats will be significantly hindered for the duration of the conflict. Despite this, <clears throat> the overall effect of the reinvigorated American bombing campaign upon the overall effectiveness of the Africa Shield has yet to be determined. A significant blow to the enemy war machine. Awesome. 1.1 billion in debt. So be it. Whatever. What matters is that we build, 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 build ourselves still, still. I love building. Alright, so the divisions are back. They did a great, great job. Uh, you guys come right there. That's fine. Ah, airborne nurses. And let us do counterinsurgency units. The African SS are native to the land. Despite their faults, they made up, made up uh, make valuable guerrilla fighters. Since they've grown up, lived, and will likely die in the battlegrounds that live or make up the area near South Africa, they're immediately comfortable with the land. Because of their unique heritage, they're likely they're like ghosts. The Africans move from land, strike, and then hide with the native population before the Americans can so much as lift a finger. No longer, though. The time has come to even the advantage. Some retornados were natural outdoorsmen and have never truly forgotten their old home. For these qualities have turned have been some have been approached by the CIA, who wish to recruit them for the war effort. If we allow them to, they can nullify the advantage the Africans have. Yes. That might be exactly what our allies need. Uh, who, did, who led this group? Is it Antonio? I don't think it was. Uh, it was Alfonso, I think, yeah. Nice. Very nice. Cool, cool, cool. Counterinsurgency units. New tariffs. Host expensive banquets with foreign leaders? I think so. Yes, absolutely. And we shall finish with Os Veratos. Iberia sent quite a few Portuguese down to the south of Africa. No matter how many we send, it just doesn't seem to be enough. Clearly the mistake was prioritizing quality over quantity so highly as we barely sent barely anyone. Any advantage is quickly nullified by the total lack of people to capitalize on it. As it were, we will be sacrificing a bit of that fighting quality for numbers. To this end, we will form the Veriatos Volunteer Divisions, originally deployed to Spain to assist the Franco many years ago. Many brave Portuguese men will be able to taste the honor of battle, made all of the sweeter by revenge. This will not uh, rest until Angola and Mozambique have been avenged. Oh, yes. Oh, we can grab 
Wait, give me some volunteers. Oh, look at that. Part of Africa's exploded. Nice. Very good. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that is not good. That is not Central Africa. Oh, that is not good. That is not good. That is not good. How did they do that? Central Africa. Sweet West Africa. Oh, boy. That is not ideal. Oh, the capital is... Oh, that is not ideal. Holy cow. Let's go and do this once again. Get rid of the radicals. That'd be good. Woo, I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, Marie Yeah, They're still content. Whatever. Uh, what do I do with all this political power now? Hmm. Let's make our divisions maybe a little better. Six and four, probably. Maybe battle tanks. Maybe more... Uh, that armor's not bad. I might just go... At, oh, that's all we can do. Okay, whatever. Tanks-wise, yeah, we're gonna need a lot more tanks. Guns, we got... Black PSYOPs in South Africa. In war, psychological operations are given. What is widely known as white PSYOPs as seen in virtually every theater of war, with the distribution of state-approved propaganda such as newspapers, posters, and leaflets among foreign populations and military ranks. What is lesser known, however, is what is known as black PSYOPs. Throughout the South African War, Iberian Psychological Warfare, units have conducted black psychological operations in an attempt to dissuade, demoralize, and convince many enemy forces and populations. These initial operations have seen some limited success, however, in conjunction with the Central Intelligence Agency of the U.S., they help to expand the scope of their black psyops. The Americans have proven to be rather brutal yet effective in securing a stronger hold over South African territory in conjunction with the South African government and Iberian Psychological Operations Unit. An operation has been undertaken known as the Phoenix Program. This operation aims to con conduct a covert psychological operation upon those in South Africa who may possibly lean to support the Shield or Boers. Through exposure, public humiliation, humiliation, arrest, and even torture, the CIA and Iberians conduct a campaign of terror among the civilian populace who lean in support of the enemy, aiming to neutralize the membership of the hostile organizations. This is just one of many of the ways the Black Psyops concocted by the CIA, who, from whom the Iberians have been talking Apple Notes, or taking Apple Notes. Wow, this looks really bad. Please don't capitulate South Africa. Please. You're doing an okay job. But you gotta get back to Cape Town. You really do. And East London. Yeah. I don't want to do this. Um, that growth. I, I just don't want to hurt the growth, man. I just can't. Not yet. Maybe later. Maybe later. But not right now. Keep building up infrastructure. That'd be good. Uh, refineries would be very nice, though. It would still be very nice. Who needs uh, Africa when you have your own refineries, right? There you go. Oh, actually, we built up the civilian factory. Oh, you know what? Let's do two refineries. Two refineries for now, because eventually we can probably stop trading for oil. And we get more rubber doing it like this as well, so. Come on, guys. Don't. Don't give up. This is just a giant mess. Heroes from the sky. The street runs red with the blood of innocence as bombs and mortars rain from the sky. Despite American air superiority, little can be done with the enemy so close by. Civilians in South Africa find themselves in inadvertently caught in the crossfire of this bloody conflict, and as a result, many have become a casualty of war. In the chaos of the city streets, many speak of the Portuguese saviors who run through the deadly corridors, rescuing those in need. These stories, while they may appear to be fan fantastical, are in fact grounded in reality. Accounts from across the conflict in South Africa tell Portuguese medics of the Iberian army coming down to aid those in peril, risking their own life in England to do so. Hundreds of South Africans claim to have been in some way rescued by these medics, operating far outside the scope of their mission in order to provide any assistance possible for the South African populace caught in the zone's conflict. The actions of these men have truly become the make of legend. I barely truly is a force for good in this world. It seems like this is like becoming like the world's Vietnam. Like, America's getting involved. We have like German influence out there instead of like, you know, China or Russia. It seems very similar, we'll say. It gets more resource efficiency gain or extraction gain. That'd be good. Let's start improving our guns, maybe. Or anti-tank equipment, maybe. Let's try that. We could probably start upgrading that stuff. Ooh, hey, there we go. More war. More war. Not bad, not bad. Keep building this up. Does Do refineries add to your deficit? That's a good, good question to ask, actually. Man, we get so much here. 0.87, that's so nice. Ah, get rid of the radicals. Good. The new division, Azul? Yeah, why not? Even after many of its more vocal members left for Germany, the old shirt still holds a significant influence in our union, especially among the armed forces. We should expand the scale of our volunteer program, creating a new form of the Division Azul, much scarce and phalange lore. The old guard will receive the calling with enthusiasm, eager to prove their worth and restore the prestige they once had, as will many young recruits who grew up here in their father's war stories and now seek their own baptism by fire. They will march their way through the port of Bilbao with added security as AAS tag the city as a hotbed of ETA activity, where they'll sing Cara al Sol and kiss their wives one last time before they embark on what hopefully will be a one-way trip. Haha. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I got... This is so much political power. Hopefully we'll be able to spend it later on. Uh, the Union is still stable. That's nice. This orderly federal government. Uh-oh. Hmm. Oh, man. It looks like we're getting pushed back a little bit. Oh, oh, crap. That's not good. They lost that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Please, South Africa. Don't lose East London. For the love of God, don't lose, lose East London. Can I send volunteers now? 
Oh, I can't. Okay. Woo. Four divisions. Oh. Ooh. Oh, these guys look pretty weak, but that's just because we hurt them earlier. All right, boys. It's time to go to South Africa. It's time to get involved. And actually, did we already use that one guy? We did. I think he, I made him a general again. Uh, menu. Oh, menu. Well. Oh, you're a field marshal. That's okay. Uh, yeah, come back here. We are going to show up and have a good time. So how many guys can I send down here? Uh, 90 planes. Oh, that sucks. Mm-hmm. 90 planarinos. So if that's the case, we do that. So that's 50. Let's go with 40. There you go. Get down here if we can. That'd be great. Civilian budget boost. Um, so much money being spent, but that's okay. Get more political power from it, too. Good. Actually, so right now, the thing is about to be built. Let's see. 1.04. Does anything increase here? Doesn't seem like it. Cool. Build some more civilian factories, because that's always great. Awesome. That should definitely help out with our, uh, well, imported. Huh. Do we not get any more oil from... Refineries, maybe? I don't know. Actually, how's this looking? This should... Oh, look at all... This is a giant mess. Are we doing any damage here, maybe? Maybe not? Uh, actually. Now we should be doing some damage. There we go. Oh, they got 95. That's a... Basic jet interceptors. Well, we have early fighters. Seem to be doing okay here. Go ahead and... Oh. Thank you, set up. Yep, there you go. That's good. Let's see what you can do. Okay, so it's time to help save these guys up. Completely. Oh, crap. This is... Oh, did they get... Cu oh, they got cut off. That is so not good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know what? I don't know how fast we can move down here. I'm going to try to rescue them, though. Move, tanks, move. Manuel. Oh. We'll do that eventually. We'll do that eventually. I will. Add more money to the budget. All right. 67% done. Nice. I want to do that one. We're currently at 4.5. Let's go and do that one to get rid of that 0.5. Uh, good. 72% done. Nice. Look at that. Awesome. 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 What's going on? What's going on? Please don't capitulate. Please don't capitulate. Oh! Oh, Tricky Dick is gone. Goodbye, Tricky Dick. Goodbye. 29% towards reformism. That's fine with me. Okay, so they saved him. That's fine. You know what? You're, you're not even moving that far, so we're going to go ahead and try to destroy these divisions down here then. We hopefully encircle like three divisions, maybe. A new division, Azul. Very good. Send over guns, maybe. So, the start of the German Civil War is an outstanding opportunity for a nation. By sending guns to Albert Speer, the tamest of the civil German warlords, in the base case scenario, we can make amends and turn a page in history, while in the worst case, we'll keep our enemies fighting amongst themselves and their intention away from us. It also seems like a great opportunity for Iberian weapons operations such as Ostra Star CETME, whose executives are proposing that they send weapons of their own to supplement our shipments, provided the Germans are willing to pay. Yeah, that's very good. And we'll end the episode soon, but I want to spend just a little bit more time here. So, oh, the American battle tanks are looking really weak. Holy crud. Cool. All right, guys, keep moving. Actually, you guys are already here. You guys are leaving. You guys are taking a you're taking a long time to get over here. Wow. Mountains, rivers, you know that makes sense actually. I want these enemy divisions to leave first, and then we'll attack. Come on, leave, 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 leave. Oh, Cape Town is back. Cool. Oh my goodness, please leave, please leave. I know Africa's a big place, but come on, please leave. Are you there yet? Come on. There we go. Move in. Aryan Brotherhood is gone or something, or they defeated someone. Let's look at these divisions. Come on. Oh man, sending the tanks was a bad idea. Oh, they're in a mountain province. That sucks. What? Do you want to attack me? No, 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 no. Cool. We could definitely use more production. But not bad. Go, go, go. Awesome, you're doing a great... Even the infantry is even faster than you. God dang, that sucks. These divisions shall be encircled and destroyed. God dang, America. You have a much bigger industrial base than we do. And you're still sucking more. Albert Speer asked for weapons. With a German Reich embroiled in the destructive civil war, each side is trying to get all possible help to defeat their opponents. Emissaries from Albert Speer, who appears to be more the moderate contender to the mantle of the Fuhrer, have approached us for help. They state their need for military equipment. We promise... And I promise to remember our help in the future. What should we answer? He's not looking good, to be honest with you. He's really not. Uh, sure. Better to him than Hadrish for sure. That's fine. Come on, circle them and circle them. Come on, infantry, you got this. We did it. 
go ahead and lap them up. And when you're here, go ahead and help them out. Crush the enemies. Even though we're fighting in mountains, which really, really sucks, but... But whatever. I'm doing it with my cat, Binky. Army interoperability. Great. Lozano, elected president of Mexico. Okay, well, very cool, I guess. Uh, breakthrough line attack. Let's look at more support companies first. That's fine. Oh, man. Trying to win here is actually really tough. Hey, Binky, okay? That's fine. Keep them, uh, keep them here. Even if we're not winning right here, that's still fine. Send over guns. Bowman conquers Hatred who's still alive, huh? But not too many. Our weapons and balls are dwindling every day, and we have already spent sent every old Mauser we had as we were to spear. The generals are already increasingly unhappy with the depletion of our stockpiles, and dipping into the newer models is out of the question. We cannot possibly send them our best weaponry. At last, Spiel loses, and we find ourselves turned against us after the end of the Civil War by a vengeful Germany. If one of Spiel's rivals comes out on top, then we may very well see seek to punish us for stabbing them in the back. Yet one young captain has suggested a brilliant solution. We should take hold of our stockpile of damage weapons, jury rig them, and give them a paint job. Fit them in brand new boxes and then ship them to Germany. It'll take some time to get the weapons in order, but Spiel can hold on with our brave volunteers at his side. I just want to complete... Get rid of these guys first and then end the episode. Nice. Good. 69 is nice. Oh, these guys got encircled. That is not ideal. Come on. Oh, the tanks are not looking good either. Oh boy, what's going on? And there goes Kennedy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Good. First one's done. You don't have range over there. That's fine. I should not have sent these tanks. Woo! Help out, help out. Awesome, we did it, my friends. Uh, you know what? I want to read one more focus first before we end the episode. Let's try that. Please try to get over there. Oh, you might not be able to, though. Hmm. What do we do? Military austerity. Uh, raise worker salaries. Add more money to the budget. Start building that up. That'll be great. Conservative, mostly. 29. Yeah. People really leans towards Franco now. See what happens. Oh crap, they actually beat us there. That sucks. Cool. That's fine. Grab some 1960s infantry weapon improvements. Better anti tank. We can go down there, please. Oh, but not. Uh oh. Oh, no. what, what? Uh. Oh, well, there goes Spiel. Spiel's dead. Okay, then. We can... I'm not going to read this because we read this last time. That should be okay. We'll see what happens. Don't hurt my tanks too much. South Africa now is doing it a little bit better, which is awesome. Hey, we actually got down here. Cool. I want to save the division, but I just don't think we will be able to. Come on, give him some more support. Give him some more support. GDP, not bad. I could cut military spending just a little bit more, but not right now. Now, since we've sent volunteers to help out South Africa. Oh. Fuel gain from refineries goes up. Uh, get even more. I want to be uh, independent from other nations. Even more manpower. Look. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, we're getting attacked. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, the division died. God dang it. That sucks. Uh, let's see. That tile's right there. You might be actually be able to push since they did wear themselves out against us right there. Oh, I don't want to hurt our... GDP growth. Not bad, not bad. Where are you guys going? You guys can go right there, actually. Shouldn't be too much. Oh god, it's mountains and tiles. You know what, you hold then. Uh, infantry come down here. You should be able to win up here, too, so. Definitely should not have sent tanks over this direction. Yeah, they can probably pierce us. Oh, maybe not, actually. Get the infantry in there. They'll do fine. They'll do fine. Oh, the tanks sucked. Yeah, I should have sent more infantry and special forces. That's my fault. Could find the national powers, council powers, and we'll do permit legislative oversight. Providing the council with oversight will allow them to have a wide aspect of information that will be very useful for the job. Of course, having access to this information will also make them more powerful. What are we, what are we going to do about it? But regardless, that's going to end today's episode. We've finally helped out the Union of South Africa. We made sure. Oh, look at that. We actually own all this stuff up here. Nice. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we have a great time reforming the Iberian Union. Thanks for watching, though, and have a great rest of your day.